Let's talk about um, some just basic info for chemical reactions here. Have some words that we need to know in order to deal with chemical reactions. Have coefficient reactants, products, and yields. Um, coefficients are the large numbers that go in front of a chemical reaction. For example, if we have H2 plus O2 yields H2O, you may see it written with a 2 in front of the H2 and the H2O. Those 2's are the coefficients. They're multipliers, just like in math class. Um, that would mean 2 of the H2's and 2 of the H2O's. Reactants are the things that go into the reaction. They're usually over here on the left hand side. The products are the things that come out. They're often on the right. They're definitely where the arrow is pointing. The arrow always points to your towards your products. <clears throat> Yields is how we're going to read the arrow. We're going to say this has 2H2 plus O2 yields 2H2O. That's how we would read that out to someone. Some other terms that go with chemical reactions are skeleton equation, balanced equation, and law of conservation of mass. A skeleton equation is simply just the, it's the bare bones of an equation. It's not balanced yet. Things don't equal each other on both sides, but it's just our starting point to work from. A balanced equation has an equal number of atoms on both sides, and it's because of the law of conservation of mass that we have balanced equations. Um, you can read what it says there for the definition of the law of conservation of mass. I have some symbols here as well <coughs> that we have gone over in my chemistry classes about what you need to know for reactions, that the arrow means yields. You sometimes will see a reversible arrow, like the arrow points right and left. That means that the reaction can go both ways, like the products can be on the left or the right side. Then we have symbols for the states. Um, I'll talk about this in a later video about how you decide. I have a video on solubility that talks about how to decide if something is soluble or not. <clears throat> but, excuse me, you can have a solid, a gas, a liquid, or you can have something that's aqueous. The easiest way that I have students remember this is the gases and the liquids are very few. So I focus on memorizing the, all of the gases and memorize the liquids because it's just a handful of things that you have to remember. And then the solid or the aqueous you can sort out from there. Your gases are definitely um, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, and all of the noble gases. Your liquids are mercury, bromine, and um, water. Now, a little bit lower down here, you'll see that I have the diatomic elements are, are written out here. That everything that you write as an element has to be written by itself, just like it is off the periodic table, unless it's a part of these seven. And I refer to this as Brinkelhoff. I mean, it, it kind of spells that. It's a way to say it and help remember it. That bromine, iodine, nitrogen, chlorine, hydrogen, oxygen, and fluorine are the elements that get written diatomically. So if you wanted to write down pure oxygen, you would write O2. If you wanted to write pure iodine, you would write I2, etc. <clears throat> okay, Brinkelhoff, almost all of Brinkelhoff is a gas. So it's actually the, the Unkelhoff part of it, the, the N, the Cl, the H, the O, and the F, those are all gases. Iodine is your only solid, and bromine is your only liquid that's part of Brinkelhoff. So I tell my students to focus on Brinkelhoff and memorizing that, you know, if you had to guess, it would be a gas. You have one liquid, one solid, and that pretty much takes care of what you need to know off the periodic table. So if you can remember mercury as well, well, you're, you're pretty well done. Now that means everything else is either going to be soluble in water and it will be aqueous or it will be insoluble and it will be a solid. I have a video about solubility that discusses how to know if something is soluble or not. So for more on how to decide between these two, check out that video. And then I had a couple of other things that I mentioned that you might see written over arrows that you can read and, and see what that says. Um, other things about equations that are helpful to us to know is that, you know, good equations have to have correctly written chemical formulas. When you get ready to write your formulas in chemical reactions, don't forget that you have to go back to your rules about writing ionic compounds and ionic um, naming rules and things in order to make it work. For example, if, if you're given a word, so if it says, you know, like if you're told to write um, a formula for sodium oxide, um, you have to know 
that it would be written as Na2O because every sodium is a plus one and every oxygen okay sorry I got interrupted I think I was saying the oxygen is a negative two and so if you have a plus one and a negative two those don't add up to equal zero you have to have two of the sodiums in order to make that cancel out which is how you got back to this so you may need to review your um, formula writing rules in order to be able to do the equations correctly um, remember that anything that's an element you just write its symbol straight off the periodic table unless it's a part of Brinkelhoff in which case you will write them diatomically or write them as two and then last but not least is that in order to write a good equation you have to balance it you have to obey the law of conservation of mass and there's going to be a separate video on that in order to do balancing.